offering there. You can be seated. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. And um, I want you to know I have found out the perfect time to go shopping. Those of you who know me well know I have an aversion to malls. I have to take Benadryl if I do go so I won't break out. But the other night, Janet convinced me to go, and we took our little granddaughter to go do something there. And it was on a Tuesday evening after Black Friday, the, previ the previous Friday, and then Cyber Monday. And I guess everybody had run out of money, and there was no one at the mall. It was wonderful. And I thought, man, this is the time I'm going to go. And um, anyway, is, isn't Christmas great? It really is. It's a time that we can think about the birth of our Savior. And the reason that's important is because the Lord could have done what He did, I guess, a thousand different ways. I mean, He could have saved us a different way, but, but He didn't. What He chose to do was to set up a, a system, if you will, where he would have to enter into the world to save sinners. And I'm glad he did, aren't you? And, uh, and I was also thinking, we, we just live in times that are a little unhinged, aren't they? Um, I, I wrote down a list of things like uh, stuff that's going on in Hollywood. Have you ever noticed that stuff? Stuff that's going on in politics stuff that's going on in the economy. And then I thought of the stuff that I've heard this past week as a pastor. Hey, pastor, I've, I've got cancer. Hey, pastor, there's stuff going on in my family that's really tough. Hey, pastor, my marriage is kind of here don't know hey pastor my kids are whatever and my question this morning to us is do we have any word to say to not just the world but to ourselves is there any word in Christmas in the Christ event, that Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, born under the law, came to earth to redeem those of us who are under the curse of the law. Do we have any word to say to this world? Well, if you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 2, and I want to go to verse 8. Jesus has been born, and the Bible tells us, that the angels announced this to the shepherds. And I think we have a word here, if you will. Look, if you will, in verse 8. This is after the birth of Jesus, roughly on the same night or thereabouts. This is what the word says. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, now here it is, verse 10 and 11, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And then he tells them what a sign will be. You'll find this babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Verse 14 says, The sky was filled with angels saying, Glory to God. Verse 15, The angels went away. The shepherd says, Let's go see this. And then I want you to look at verse 17. After they visited Jesus, it says, And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. Five words that we have for the world and we have for ourselves right here in this text. Word number one, fear not. Don't be afraid. I don't, I don't know that I've ever been alive and I'm only 27 years old. I don't know whether I've been alive where people have been two things. 
fearful and angry. Have you ever seen so much fear and anger? You're either fearful or we're angry. And here's the good news, that Jesus' birth and life and death and resurrection remind us that we do not have to be afraid. The word often repeated throughout Scripture is, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. These angels come to these shepherds. These shepherds are minding their own business. Like the little boy said in Sunday school one day, they were washing their socks by night. And all of a sudden, an angel appears. One angel, one angel. And by the way, if you know anything about angels in Scripture, one is enough that if he shows up, he can, he can cause dread or joy. And then in a few minutes, the whole sky is filled with angels. And no wonder the angel had to remind them, hey, don't, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. And this is a repeated thing throughout Scripture. For example, the Bible tells us that God had to tell Moses, don't be afraid. He had to tell Joshua in Joshua 1, do not be afraid. He told Paul, don't be afraid. He told his disciples, don't be afraid. And, and, and as a part of that, brothers and sisters, not only is our message to the world, do not be afraid, our message to the world is, we will not be afraid. Those of us who have come to faith in Jesus Christ, we are not afraid. You remember what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10? Jesus says, don't fear the one who can kill, kill you. Fear the one who can kill your body and soul and cast you into hell. That is, God, the only right fear that we ought to have is a holy reverence fear of God. The message that we have for the world, brothers and sisters, is do not be afraid. And, and at the same time, to say to the world, we will not be afraid because we are in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question this morning. What are you afraid of? What is the greatest fear in your life? We have them at different ages, don't we? When you're young, I'm afraid I won't be asked to the birthday party. When you're in high school, I'm afraid I won't be pretty or handsome. When you're a young adult, is it, will, will I find somebody to spend the rest of my life with? When you're a parent, you, you're afraid of what's going to happen to your kids. When, you, when your kids are gone, you're afraid that they're going to forget who you are. When you're older, you think people are going to forget you and that you're going to be cast aside at every stage of life. There is something to be afraid of. And sometimes it's economic, sometimes it's physical, whatever it is. And brothers and sisters, the message of Christ in Christmas is do not be afraid. Are you a fearless person? Psalm 27, 1 says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I, will, I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. Brothers and sisters, our word to the world, our word to ourselves is the same word that's always been from the beginning. Do not be afraid. Let me tell you something. If fear runs your life, you will be crippled. You will be inhibited. You will not grow spiritually. You will be constantly on the run from something. Do not be afraid. Look back in Luke chapter 2. Look in verse 10. Here's the second word that we have to the world. Don't be afraid because I've got some good news for you. Look what it says right there. Behold, I bring you good news, good tidings. Good news. Anybody need any good news here today? Our, our world is inundated. You know, good news doesn't sell, does it? Good news doesn't sell. Bad news sells, but good news doesn't. Because it's just good news. 
Brothers and sisters, we have a word to the world that there is some good news. And the good news is that God has come into the world so that He might have a relationship with us in the person of Jesus Christ. That is the best news of all news. That is good news. And, and here's the third word that goes with it. It will be good news of great joy. Now the word here in the original is very interesting. It's not just any kind of joy. It is super abundant. We don't even have a word in the English that translates this Greek word. In fact, if you want to say, it's like mega joy. Big joy. Anybody have big joy in here? That's what the angel said to the shepherds. Fear not, I bring you some good news that will produce in you great joy. Now let me ask you a question. You lost your joy? Guess what, brothers and sisters, you know what I've discovered about joy? Joy is a choice. It's not just a possession, but it's, it's a joy that God puts in you as you and I have committed ourselves to King Jesus. Have we forgotten how good of news this is? That we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid because there's some good news that's come from on high and that good news produces the kind of joy that cannot be squashed by this world. Do you have that joy? You say, preacher, what is that joy? Well, let me, here's the best definition I know of joy biblically. You remember what it says in Hebrews chapter 12 where it says that we are to run the race of faith with patience and endurance. And then it says a very interesting thing. Keeping your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy of the cross has now been seated at the right hand of the Father. Hold, hold it. Preacher, help me out. Are you saying that Jesus was jumping up and down about the cross? Well, that's not what I read in my Bible. I read in my Bible that before he went to the cross, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane sweating blood. How is that joyful? You know what the joy of Jesus was? Now listen very carefully. And here's what your joy will be, and here's what my joy will be, and here's what our joy will be. Joy is being and knowing that you are in the center of what God wants you to do and what He wants you to be. No matter what. And the joy of Jesus wasn't always, hey, I'm chipper. It was knowing that He was doing the will of the Father. And so the joy that the angels talked about is a joy that's found in Jesus. And as we center ourselves in His will and in His purposes, as we find ourselves in Him, there is true joy. Let me be real plain. There is joy even when you get the word that you're sick. There is joy even when you lose your job. There is joy even when the family's not doing well. There can be joy even in you when everything's breaking loose around you. Joy. The angel said to these shepherds, don't be afraid. I've got some good news that produces great joy. Notice what it says in verse 11. It says that there is, in verse 10 it says, th this good news that's great joy will be for all the people. All what people? All people in two ways. Now listen very carefully. 
The angel, what they announce, goes to all people. We are to preach the gospel to all people. Amen? Amen. We preach the gospel to all people. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. We preach the good news to all people. So in a sense, the good news is for all people. But we also know that not everybody comes to faith in Christ. But here's what we know. Here's the second part of all the people. It's not just that we preach to all the people, but guess what? God saves all kinds of people. Not just people like you or me. He saves all kinds of people. In fact, just turn to your neighbor and just say, man, you, uh, what kind are you? Can you do that? Just do that real quick. And look at them, and you're probably thinking, I, I, I don't know that I'd save that person. When I was in high school, we had a guy named Walter. Walter was a long hair hippie, maggot-infested hippie guy in my high school senior class. Okay? And he just loved drugs and he loved LSD and heroin. Those were the drug of choices when I was in high school back in 1847. And it was awesome. And the last guy on my list who I thought would ever come to Jesus was Walter Moore. Until five years after I graduated from high school, I was on the phone one day with my mother. And she said, Kevin, you won't believe what I just happened. I said, what? Walter Moore got saved. After I passed out and they did CPR on me, I said, please repeat what you just said. She said, Walter has come to faith in Christ and his life has been radically changed. So, so when we talk about, all, it, it's easy to talk about, well, it's good news of great joy for all the people and the world is just kind of a blob of people. I want you to know this is specific. He saves all kinds of people like you and me and broken, cracked pots, people who have messed up, people who've done wrong, people who are sinners. God doesn't save anybody but a sinner. And the good news that came to these shepherds, do you know who these shepherds were? Now, not all shepherds were this way. But back then, did you know that it was easy? If you were a criminal, you could embed yourself in a group of shepherds. So it wasn't uncommon to have some petty thieves among the shepherds. And the word came to them. This is good news, not just to a blob of world. We're going to save the world. This is good news to your kind. Your kind. What is this good news specifically? Don't be afraid. It's good news of great joy for all the people. And here's the last word. A Savior has been born. In the city of Bethlehem. He's Christ the Lord. Wow. Let me unpack that. A Savior has been born. He's been born. Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. He is Christ. That is, He is the Messiah of God, the one who fulfills all the Old Testament prophecies. He was born in the city of David. He's a king. He's a king. He will sit on the throne of David. He is a king. He is the Lord. He is not just a Savior. He is the Savior. Did you get that unpacked? Our Savior, the one who saves us from our sins, was born. God became a man. Did, let that settle on your mind. God, Jesus had no time when He was not. He was always eternally God, second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, three persons. And yet in the fullness of time, Galatians 4, 4, God came to earth. Philippians 5, 2, 5, it says, that let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who did not think His Godness was something to be hung on to or cling, but emptied Himself. What did Jesus do in the incarnation? Did He get rid of His godness? No. But He got rid of all of His 
freedom to express his godness. And he became a man and God was wrapped in human flesh, put in a manger, grew in wisdom and stature with God and man. He, at the age of 30, he launched his ministry. It was God. When he preached, it was God. When he healed, it was God. When he, when he died, it was God. When he was raised from the dead, it was God. It's all God. God has come to save sinners. He is our prophet, priest, and king. He is our Messiah. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is the only Savior. Now, I'm almost done. This word we have to the world, now listen, Barry, this is the hook. I've set you up. This word that we have to our the world, to our co-worker, fear not. You don't have to, are you, why are you afraid? God has come. I've got some good news for you. I have a message of joy for you. And don't think you're out of the loop. It's for all the people. People like you. What is this fearless, joyful? Good news message. There's a Savior. There is a Savior born in Bethlehem who is Christ the Lord. Now here's the hook. Did you know that you can't give to the world what you don't have? Because when we look at the world, turn the TV on, open the paper, read your smartphone, read your website, read your news thing. That's what I get. Pop up, there's the news. That's what, look at the guys. Look what they're doing in Hollywood. Is there any good news? And then we're frightened. We're wringing our hands and we're afraid all the time. We're constantly afraid. And our joy is suppressed and it's pushed down. And we forget we have a Savior. And all of a sudden, we Christians are acting like the world. Why would anyone follow Jesus if we live the way everybody else does? You cannot give away what you do not have. You know how I know these shepherds had this? When the angels left, they had a shepherd committee meeting. You ever been to a shepherd committee meeting? You know what they said? Hey boys, you be the chairman. And I think we need to go see this thing. So can you imagine this? They left the sheep in the field. <laughs> there they are. Dumb sheep. Just leave them. Let the wolves have them. Let's go see this thing. Oh, Jesus. And the Bible says they went to Bethlehem. And they came in and saw Jesus. And, and it, it was the best news they'd ever heard. And then it says... They made known abroad what they had seen and heard. Seen and heard. Now, you can't give away what you don't possess. And we don't have a word if this is not what we talk about. Now, I've been thinking this week about Tennessee football. Can I get a witness on this now? And I'm not pick. I don't have anything. To, I who in the world knows what's going on there. But isn't it amazing how much we talk about that? I mean, I get up in the morning. It's 102.5, the sports, and I turn on there. It's, it's, then I turn over here, and then I read it about it, and then I get this and get this. It, and, and, and we're talking about it, and it, it's important at some level, I suppose, and all that stuff. And then we talk about this sport and that sport. And we talk about the Titans are playing today, and if we make the playoffs and all that stuff. I know all that stuff. And isn't it amazing how we'll talk, talk, talk. We talk about this, or we'll talk about politics. Well, what, what has Donald Trump tweeted out today? What has he done today? Or we'll talk about taxes, or we'll talk about this stuff. Isn't it amazing that we talk about the most banal Things in the world. We talk, talk, 
talk, talk, talk about everything but the thing that can change the world. Sports won't change the world. The Dow Jones going over 24,000 won't change the world. Economics won't change the world. Politics won't change the world. None of these things will change the world. And woe to the church. Woe to the church that forgets the word we have. Don't be afraid. We've got some good news. God has come and it produces great joy because He's a great Savior. Let's let it be known. That's our word. You cannot give away what you do not have. And you can't tell it unless you talk it. Let us brothers and sisters, say this word. Let's pray. Father, you have given us a marvelous word, an amazing word. And yet we've got to get this settled in our own hearts. We have to embrace this good news that produces great joy, that's for all the people, that's in a Savior that causes us to live a fear-free, anxiety-free life. And yet, Lord, we sometimes don't possess what we preach. And sometimes we don't talk as much about the good news. Lord, forgive us of this sin. Forgive us of this sin. Yes, Lord, we have stuff to deal with, work, play, sports, all those things are a part of our lives. But underneath all of this, Lord, let the good news well up, well up in glad evangelism. Let us possess it, Lord. Let it possess us. Would you stand? And I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and I'm going to ask...